The Traction Engine is a simple yet powerful MIDI tool that allows you to easily generate variations of existing MIDI by muting steps from incoming MIDI patterns. To install Subtraction Engine, navigate to the folder where it was downloaded. Double click to open the zip file. This will reveal a Subtraction Engine folder. We can drag the entire folder, including the user guide or just the Subtraction Engine subfolder into Live's user library. The user library can be found in the Places section of Live's browser. A typical place to store it would be in the Presets, MIDI Effects, Max MIDI Effects subfolder. But in my case, I've created a Manifest Audio folder where I will store all Manifest Audio devices. The important thing is that I drag this folder into Live's user library. Any Max devices stored in the user library will automatically be ingested into Live's Max for Live device category. Now that all the files are copied into my desired subfolder of the user library, I can open it and navigate into the preset subfolder. This contains all the MIDI effect presets and within the Max MIDI effect folder, the AMXD file, which is the default instance of Subtraction Engine. I can then add this to a collection by selecting the file and hitting the corresponding key on my keyboard. Crucially, Subtraction Engine does not produce any MIDI notes. Therefore, it must be fed MIDI from an existing MIDI clip or a MIDI sequencer prior to it on a MIDI track. Because Subtraction Engine is a MIDI effect, I need to insert it before instruments. Instruments translate MIDI into sound. It is not an audio effect, so I can drag an instance from the folder in which I've installed it prior to this entire drum rack. As I trigger this MIDI clip, I can mute steps and you'll hear that it's muted both the hi-hat and the kick as well as the hi-hat and the snare on the one and five of this one bar pattern respectively. To do things with a little more control, I'll probably have more fun placing this subtraction engine directly on a specific drum rack pad such as the hi-hats that are currently playing 16th notes. To do this, I can simply drag it onto that specific drum rack pad. From here, I can mute steps to create more interesting patterns. All of the steps are available for key or MIDI mapping. Now, where it gets more interesting is that I can randomize which steps are on and which are off by clicking the dice button. Currently, all steps have a 50% chance of being randomized. I can adjust each step's individual probability above or below that. At 0%, a step will never be randomized. This lock will show up indicating it will ignore randomization input, but you can still turn it off or on. So it is in manual control mode only. And as many times as I click the random button, that Steps state will not change until I change it manually. So I'm going to click this button to unlock that step, which I could also do by simply dragging the probability slider to a non-zero value. And now where it gets interesting is if I engage auto dice mode by clicking the button that says manual. Now, all eligible steps, in other words, steps that are not currently locked, will be randomized according to their probabilities at this interval specified here. So currently, all steps are randomizing every bar. To make it somewhat more musical, I will increase this to a two bar interval, and I will increase the probability of randomization a bit, and I will make it so that all of the upbeat steps uh, will always play. 
So I always retain that upbeat hi-hat pattern while the other hi-hats randomize around them. I can also currently turn all the unlock steps on until the next auto dice sequence or off or invert their state. I'll explore this again later. I think maybe it would be good to look at this in a slightly more musical context. So I'll activate this eighth note bass clip. Again, I will drag subtraction engine prior to the instrument. And because this pattern is playing eighth notes, I will set the grid to eighth notes. So each on-off impulse will occur in eighth note intervals. Now I could simply side chain the early steps by muting them, giving that quarter note side chain effect. But I think what I wanna do is create something a little more musical. So I will set the interval to four bars and adjust the global probability slider here and enter auto dice mode. Now I have to wait for the end of this four bar cycle and there we go. So there are always only 16 steps available. However, I can change the length of the cycle. So right now, 16 eighth notes, that's two bars. But if I just want a one bar pattern, I can reduce the cycle of the steps. Now I think that maybe I want the first and fifth of those always off. So, I could uh, manually turn some of those back on to make it a little more musical and maybe increase the probability and reduce the interval. So, as you can see, this is producing constantly evolving changes. I'm gonna go to a 16th note synth pattern and see what I can do over there. So I think this part would respond much better to a four bar interval. Now, if I reduce the global probability all the way to zero, that is gonna have the effect of locking all the steps in their current state. If I increase the slider, it does nothing. However, the unlock button has gone orange and the dice button is grayed out, indicating that because all the steps are locked, randomization does nothing. So I can click the unlock and it will restore all steps to being unlocked at the current global randomization value or 1%, whichever is greater. Now, this is all in the default secure mode. If I bring this down to 0%, the slider does nothing, as I've just demonstrated. I can increase the individual sliders to change individual steps probability, but once they're all at zero, the lock goes orange and the dice are gray once again. If I switch the locks into force mode, that means the global probability slider forces the locks open. So it's up to you to decide which mode is most appropriate for your workflow. I tend to leave the locks in secure mode and there we go, they're now set to one. So they won't randomize very often. I'm gonna increase them all. 
Now I can create weighted probabilities for different steps and of course lock a certain pattern of them to either always be on or always be off. Playing around with the invert, off, and on buttons allow me to have quite a high degree of performative control. Now, Live 11 has made MIDI note probability a thing, but the problem is that chords are treated as independent notes, so you can't really mute or set the probability of an entire chord going off and on at the same time. But Subtraction Engine treats all notes on one step together. So I can easily mute or probabilistically mute entire chords together. Now if I set this to a auto dice interval and I decide I like what it's done, I can simply toggle out of auto dice mode to sort of freeze the steps in their current state and possibly make further adjustments. There's one last feature I'm excited to explore, and I think it would make sense with this very busy lead sound that's about to come in. And that is the cycle masking. So it's a very busy pattern. So I'm just gonna turn a bunch of these off manually, and I'll shorten the cycle to an irregular rate. So the lead pattern, it's still four bars long. However, we're only playing every sixth, sixteenth note that comes through. I could offset it by either unmuting the second step or by adjusting the cycle start here. Now, if I always want this one to be on, I'll lock it, and then I can performatively turn them all on and then off. Or I can just hit the invert button twice in either state. And of course, this is all mappable to keys or MIDI, with the exception of unlocked steps in auto dice mode, which cannot be mapped due to undo history issues that have been part of Max for Live since its inception. So, I hope you've learned a few things about Subtraction Engine and how it can be used generatively and performatively to create lots of interesting variations in any workflow. And uh, I hope you will try it out.